Hare Krishna Prabhu. Guru Maharaj, um, maybe you'll wait for a few more minutes. Many of the devotees are still trying to join. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we have about 21 uh, who have already joined. How many? 21 so Tw far. Oh, 21, okay. okay. So I'll just, um, you know, put back to uh, Prabhupada singing and uh, we'll join back in a few Guru Maharaj, would you, um, should I pass on the host rights to you now? The host rights? Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm... Do I'm I... giving you a huh? PowerPoint? Or is it a lecture today? Yeah, PowerPoint. Okay, okay. So, give me a minute. Um, Guru Maharaj, so I've passed on the presentation rights to you. Okay. So. You don't want to welcome everyone first? Yes, yes. I'll just wait for another two more minutes. One, still people are a lot of the devotees are joining in. Okay. We have around eighty four now. Last week we had around thirty six. Uh, I think uh, for the benefit of those who have already joined, let's just start with the class. So, um, Hare Krishna, everybody. We are very fortunate to have His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinash Narasimha Swami Guru Maharaj delivering today's uh, morning class. Guru Maharaj is joining us from Mayapur, West Bengal. Um, Guru Maharaj has been delivering an average of three to four virtual lectures since the lockdown started in India. Um, Guru Maharaj, our humble obeisances and gratitude to you. For the Lakshmi Narayan Temple participants, uh, this is our 39th daily class today since the lockdown started in Singapore and since um, by this Saturday. Uh, for the Bhakta Vatsala youth group from Singapore, a very warm welcome to all of you. And um, for all the devotees joining from Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Hong Kong, Dubai and other since the slides and start today's lecture. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narottam daivim sarasatim vyasam tato jaya mudirayat nasta praeshu vabhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naistiki Krishna Swadamo Pagate Dharma Gyana Dibisaha Kalo Nishta Drishamisha Puranato Drinodataha So, Hare Krishna everyone. Good morning to you all. Uh, I'm going to make a PowerPoint presentation here this morning. Um, Hare Krishna Gurudev. Oh, Hare Krishna. Okay, so yeah. is everyone able to see this? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. It's, it's coming up okay, yeah? Yes. Okay, so this is actually a continuation of the topic we began last week. We were speaking about Lord Kapila and how Lord Kapila gave instruction to his mother Devahuti. Lord Kapila is a propounder of what's called the Sankhya philosophy. And Srila Prabhupada lectured on this chapter, this is the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam or may call it Bhagavad Purana, the 25th chapter, which is talking exclusively about devotional service. It's not really different from devotional service. There are two kapilas. The one who is maybe more prominent is the atheist kapila. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's the atheistic philosophies which are popular, which are prominent. Guru Maharaj, can you just press the record button on your screen? Because, um, you know, it's, it's not recording. No. Is there a record button on your screen? Let me see. Or otherwise, are you putting it on your, on your Facebook? Yeah. Okay, then it's all right, Guru Maharaj. Record. There is a. Oh, no. And where's the record button? I don't see any. Anyway, I have it on Facebook. We'll go with that. She had approached her son, Lord Kapila Dave, and she was expressing her. She was describing her situation, how she was feeling frustrated and disappointed, but she was just feeling so much anxiety. So she was approaching her son, who is Lord Kapila, Godhead himself. He is not different from Lord Krishna, her, her son, to get... What's happening? Why is it not? Okay. Is everyone able to see this new show? And Lord Kapila was describing to his mother about the importance of devotional service. Lurk anxiety and frustration, disappointment with your attempts to find happiness in life, they've all failed because you've forgotten the most important part of life, which is devotional service, which means practice of bhakti yoga, connecting ourselves to the Supreme personality of Godhead. There has to be some 
It doesn't mean that we have to give up everything material, but we have to understand the importance of some balance there between the material and the spiritual. So Devahuti described, described here, after hearing of the value of devotional service, Devahuti naturally seeks instruction on how to practice it. All right, we speak about devotional service. And here you can see sadhus. Sadhus mean simply people who have given up the path of materialistic life to pursue the path of spirituality. Sadhu in the, in the, in the proper sense of the term. We will explain more. So just like in the, in the picture here, the illustration, you can see many men here have gathered to get instruction from a spiritual teacher. And they've come together for the purpose of advancing on the path of liberation. We want to get liberation, we want to get free from the material life. We have to have the proper environment. So this requires finding the association with other people who have a similar desire to get free from the clutches of, from the anxiety and from the frustration of materialistic life. So they come in contact with the sadhus. You can see uh, we've given the Sanskrit there also. Every learned man knows very well that attachment for the material is the greatest entanglement of the spirit soul. But that same attachment when applied to the self-realized devotees opens the door of liberation. For the material is the cause of our entanglement. Lord Kapila had told his mother, the attachment is required. We have to let go of something. If we want to open the attachment for the material, this attachment this can be a bondage for us. It's certainly entangles the soul in material life, causes us to take birth again and again in different bodies. But the same attachment, when we use it to cultivate our spiritual path, that can open the door to liberation. So you can see in the illustration, on the top, you can see the attachment for the material. And on the bottom, you see the attachment when it's applied for self-realization. Moksha dwaram mapavrita. We want to get out from the material world. We have to change the attachment. It's natural to be attached. It's human nature. But the, we have to understand where to apply the attachment. So here we've shown how we just have to change the attachment. We already have that nature to be attached, to do things. We like activities. We like relationships. So all of this can be used in Krishna consciousness, in spiritual activities. As we've written on the bottom here, it's stated, attachment cannot be killed. It has simply to be transferred. We cannot give up the attachment. 
but we can change the attachment using our body, mind and words to engage in spiritual activities. You can see in the illustration the young lady's cooking, preparing food, and she's cooking for Krishna. She's remembering Krishna. And there's a young brahmachari. He's cleaning the dishes, washing the pots and whatever. He's also thinking of Krishna. Here's the lady doing worship, cleaning the altar, remembering she's a servant of Krishna. Some other young woman is going out to introduce Krishna conscious literature to someone. She sees Krishna in everyone. She understands everyone is a part and parcel of Krishna and she tries to give them Krishna consciousness. The young woman, young mother here has a child and she's teach, teaching her child also how to become devoted to Krishna. And here you see the devotees, two devotees, they're discussing scriptures together, hearing and discussing about the pastimes and forms and qualities of Krishna. So this is spiritual attachment. We can develop attachment for Krishna by using our senses, our body, our mind in these different ways for his pleasure. And we should just give up all attachment. We shouldn't have any desires. It's, every, it, it's human nature to have desires. We just have to know what is the proper quality of desire. How should we, how should we engage our mind? What should we do? What should we, be, what should we desire to achieve? To have no desire is impossible because it's the nature of the mind to be attached and to have desires. We just have to be careful about how short time can be possible because it's the nature of the mind to have attachment. Hmm? A living entity by constitution has the propensity to be attached to something. We say if he has no children, then he transfers his attachment to cats and dogs. I, uh, when I'm in Hong Kong, I would go for a walk in the morning. And in Hong Kong, I would see the people with their dogs, the different men come with the dogs. One man, he has his dog and he goes swimming with his dog in the sea there every morning. His dog swims with him. And another man, he has a couple of dogs and he has a, he has a, a, a little pram which he puts his dogs in and he pushes his dogs and he takes great pleasure to talk about his dogs to people. <laughs> In this way, people have, everyone has some kind of attachment. If we don't have children, we don't have a family, we make our own family with cats and dogs. We have that kind of relationship. And we, uh, sometimes they say dog is a man. Actually, who is the best friend? But in place of Krishna, we have substituted so many other things. Cats and dogs. <laughs> okay. So naturally, you have a family, we have attachment. That's proper. We should have attachment for the family. We should take care of them and be concerned for them and love them. Naturally, work hard, 
you get a nice home and vehicles, nice cars. So we have some attachment for these things. We have to take care of them. You have to look after them. They don't, you know, they're not cheap. They cost a lot of money these days. Spend a lot of money on cars and homes. We have to take care of them, maintain them. So we have some attachment there. But we have to be careful how much attachment. And the attachment shouldn't be only for these things. Some people, when they get a car, the first thing, you know, it's the thing they're most attached to. Their whole life is dedicated to the car. Okay, cars are important these days to travel. You need vehicles, but we have to understand also that they're temporary, they're not eternal. These relationships are no aspect of attachment. So cultivating spirit is recommended, attachment should be transferred to the self-realized devotees, the sadhu, the holy man the saintly persons who have dedicated themselves fully to the path of self-realization. That kind of association is very helpful for us. It, it will help us to remember that there are two paths. There are, that, every, that life is not only materialistic. There's also the spiritual aspect to life. So we have to see that example from the sadhus. The, the association, the attachment for the sadhus is very helpful for someone who's looking for the path of self-realization. So Devahuti, Lord Kapila's mother Kapila, because Devahuti was in a very un difficult situation. Her husband had gone away, right? Her husband had gone off, he'd renounced the world. And so she was left alone. So in that situation, it was especially appropriate for her to develop her attachment for sadhus, for holy people who have dead. You still have to have some attachment. There should be some it's very important. I understood. Now, as we've stated here, a sadhu is not just an ordinary man with a saffron robe or long beard. That is not exactly how we describe the sadhu. There are particular qualities of a sadhu. Particular qualities like the in knowledge of the scriptures. He should have the proper qualities of a sadhu. It is not just the dress or the beard or the hair or even the mark on the forehead which makes someone a sadhu. There has to be the proper qualities of the sadhu. That's important. We shouldn't be bewildered just by the external appearance. We have to see the, the internal qualities. There have been, in the course, uh, cheaters, people who dress like sadhus, but they have some other intention. So, uh, when Ravan desired to kidnap Mother Sita, he disguised himself as a sadhu and he came before Mother Sita begging and Mother Sita was inclined to give him charity and he took the opportunity to kidnap her. So you can see from so long ago, from the time of Lord Rama, there have been people taking the dress of sadhus with other, with false intentions. Therefore, we have to be so cautious to understand 
who is actually a sadhu? Not just only look at the external appearance. We have to hear from them. That's very important. Hearing. By hearing from the sadhu, then we can get the proper, we can understand properly the situation of the person. Some of the qualities are, well, are mentioned here, qualities of a sadhu. First of all, unflinchingly engages in devotional service. The, someone is actually the sadhu, he's actually the holy, holy man, and simply in the service of the Supreme Lord. He has no other business. He's fully engaged. Sometimes he's uh, serving the deities, sometimes he's writing books, sometimes he's performing. This is how a devotee keeps himself engaged. As Krishna, always chanting my glory, actually worship me with devotion. So it's not that a sadhu is a an idle person, very active in the service of Lord Krishna. Just like at, the, at this present time, people are working from home. Many people have, you know, transferred their office to their home, and working from home. And so this is also true for devotees. The devotees are also working from home. It's not that the devotees do nothing, but they keep themselves busy in Krishna's service. They're just like uh, this morning I'm giving this class on Zoom. So many devotees, they're also doing similar activities to make, uh, to give association and to encourage people in other places. Some devotees who are engaged in uh, distributing literature, they're also using the internet to contact people and to give, invite them to take the opportunity to reach some of Srila Prabhupada's books. At this particular time, there's no, there's not much sports going on, you know, usually people are all busy in sports and soccer and cricket, different thing, but this is not going on these days. So there's no sports for people even to watch on television. So it's a good time for them to read books. And so we have so many nice books. We have whole, many devotees are distributing whole sets of Shri, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. They're taking opportunity to contact the congregation and invite them to get some more books and read some books while they're in this lockdown period. It's a very good time to go deeper into the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. So, another quality of the sadhu, unflinching faith in Krishna. Their faith is in Krishna. Simply by serving Krishna, they're fulfilling all other commitments. That is the mood of the sadhu. He thinks like that. His commitment is to Krishna, and he has complete faith in Krishna, that Krishna provides for everyone, Krishna takes care of everyone, Krishna is the controller, and Krishna is the protector. Then, strict follower of devotional service. A follower of devotional service. He tells people to chant, and he also chants himself. It's not that he tells other people to chant, and he doesn't chant. He tells people to do things like read the books, he also reads the books. He he, he, he follows all the different principles and rules, many rules in Krishna consciousness. Actually, we don't have a lot of rules. 
We have four rules, four principles, cleanliness, austerity and truthfulness. Very minimum. I was, uh, in I was in Thailand and I was distributing books to one man there and he asked me, how many rules do you have in Krishna consciousness? I told him, we have four rules. I told him, no meat, fish, no meat, fish, necks, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. Four rules. He said, oh, only four. He said, in Buddhism, because Thailand is a Buddhist country, he said, in Buddhism, the Buddhist monks have hundreds of rules. He said, and they can hardly follow any of them. So, in Krishna consciousness, we have four rules, very, very practical rules. Rules not only for monks, these rules are for all civilized people. Everyone should want to cultivate cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. And we can cultivate these four qualities by practicing these four restrictions, which I mentioned. We should be vegetarian. We shouldn't take intoxication. We shouldn't get sex. Now, from Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes, this is a statement from Bhagavad Gita, ninth chapter, 30th verse. Just like in this picture, you can see one man, he's a hunter and some poor animal. Narada Muni has this animal. So the hunter, hunter is a very, it's a very sinful, and you know, it's not a very cultured uh, occupation. He enlightens the man and by the hunter becomes like in this other picture, you can see him now he's how he's changed he's in white ground because the two personalities narada muni is coming with angira muni and they're coming to visit there's some insects on the path and so the man becomes so concerned for the welfare of the insects that he takes so the point is that even one may perform abominable activities but if he's engaged in devotional service, then he is concerned, is Krishna consciousness. No matter what sin one has performed, he can become, he may be relieved of the reactions from in Krishna in the heart of all living entities. Before he's killing the animals, but after he met Narada Muni, now he doesn't even want to kill insects. He's totally changed. That kind of transformation has come about due to association with sadhu. So how long do we need to associate with such a person? In fact, the scriptures tell us even a moment's association can give one perfection. It doesn't have to be a long time. Srila Prabhupada told us he only associated with his spiritual teacher four or five times. Not very long. He didn't have much time to be with him. Prabhupada was initiated in 1933 and his first time, because Prabhupada, remember, he was a family man and he had a business. So he had many, also he had his responsibilities for five times he met his spiritual master. But he never forgot. So the Shastras say even a moment's association can give one perfection. That one moment can be so valuable, can make such a deep impression on our heart that we so we shouldn't think that, oh, I, uh, you know, we have to get longer time. It doesn't have to be a long time. As Srila Prabhupada himself gives the example, by, but his purpose is only for biting. So the bug is not taking advantage of the association, simply coming to bite. So it's important that when we associate with the sadhu, that we take advantage. So Srila Prabhupada told us like that. He, 
he tried to uh, remember the nature. Here's a statement from the Srimad Bhagavatam glorifying the value of association. This verse comes from the first, the first canto, chapter 18. Uh, Sonakirishi is the leader of the sages in Naimisharanya, and he's describing the association there with devotees. Uh, Ramananda Rai Prabhu, are you getting association? Yes, Maharaj. How often? How many times a week? When we go doing it on Zoom, we are contacting each other, probably on alternate days and probably more. Those of you who like to learn, memorize slokas, I remember in the time of Mahavishnu Goswami when he was visiting Singapore, his, his disciples were very, very, not, very learned and very erudite. They spoke the slokas so beautifully under his inspiration. So the association of devotees is described here. The value of a moment's one moment's association cannot be compared to the attainment of heavenly planets. Right? We want to understand the value of something, we will compare it. You know, the value of this car is maybe a thousand dollars or something, you know. Like, you, you have some value. But what, what about the value of a moment's association with the devotee? There's nothing material which it can compare to. It's so valuable that you can't compare it to anything else. Can it be compared to the, to the heavenly planets? You know, we think about going to, you know, people in Singapore, they like to go to Australia or they go to Hawaii, you know, you like this on earth. But even, you were, even if you were to go to the, the heavenly planets of the universe, Swarga Loka, that's nothing compared to the value of the association with a devotee. Because the heavenly planets... Just simply, what, what is there in the heavenly planets? So much opulence, so much sense gratification. And that sense gratification simply entangles us in the material life again. So a moment's association with devotees is so much more valuable than going to the heavenly planets. And it's even more worth than death not having to take birth again, getting liberation. But the devotee, for a devotee's, the value, a devotee's association is more valuable than that. Because the liberation from matter does not situate one properly in Krishna's into the spiritual sky. That kind of liberation is not what a devotee desires. So the association with devotee is much more valuable than that. And then definitely then it's more valuable than all kinds of material prosperity. You know, often people think about material prosperity, having wealth, enjoying the material world. But Srimad Bhagavatam said that is for those who are meant for death. You want to remain in the wheel of birth and death? Then enjoy material life. You enjoy it, but how long can you enjoy it? Very soon we die. Kali Yuga, we have a short life. Therefore, we should be very conscious. Think about where are we going? What is the future? So association with devotees, very powerful to help us to understand the real value of life. What is actually valuable in life? 
sometimes people think, oh, devotees are poor. Not all devotees are poor. Devotees have the most valuable thing, they have peace of mind. And by this material attachment, they're freed of this material attachment because they've cultivated the relationship with bhakti yoga, the practice of bhakti yoga. Mahatmas, meaning great souls. All the devotees are great souls because they've dedicated themselves to the service of the Lord. In this way, the, the path to liberation is open. This illustration actually comes from the previous life of Narada Muni. Narada Muni in his previous life was the son of a maidservant woman and he had the opportunity to receive some sadhus or some mahatmas in his home and he took the opportunity to serve them. And while they were staying in his home, he regularly associated with them and he learned from them. He saw how, how they lived and how they practiced, what they did, and he learned from them. He learned how to meditate. He learned how to lead a regulated life and what practices, how he should act, how he should. Uh, if we don't associate with the devotees, with the Mahatmas, we don't serve the Mahatmas, then it's the other side. We have to associate with someone and it becomes service to the materialists. When you serve the materialistic way of life, then that is the road in the material world. We are thinking it's enjoyment, but it's actually just hell. It's the pathway into hell. So we have the choice either to associate with the devotees or with the materialists. There are these two kinds of people. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna in a demoniac nature. We can associate with people who are godly or we can associate with people who are totally materialistic. They're dedicated to the path of suffering. With the more we are the servant of the senses, the more we fall into ignorance and we become overwhelmed by existence. What is the gift? What are they going to give us? We associate, what do they have to give us? Well, just like we, 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 go, we go to see people, we want to know, what am, I, what am I going to get from this person? What's he going to do for me? Sadhus, there will be, just like here, you can see sadhus, six Goswamis there. What are they doing when they were, they would associate together, they were, and after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Goswamis came, six Goswamis of Rinde, to discuss the topics of the scriptures and to research different scriptures. When we meet together, we want to also discuss the scriptures and enlighten one. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes pleasure by enlightening one another and conversing about me. So this is, this is the business of devotees when they come together. We discuss scriptures together and they, 
Sadhu will teach us how to become a devotee, right? We want to become a devotee. How to become a devotee? That we have to learn from the sadhus. We have to learn how to chant the holy name, how to worship Krishna, how to study, how to cook for Krishna, how to live. This is a devotee lifestyle. We will learn how to be a sincere servitor. In the material world, people are all fighting to be the master, to be the controller, and to be the enjoyer. But in Krishna consciousness, we take pleasure in being the, the servant. We like to be the servant. Just like King of Arisa, Maharaj Prataparudra, he became the servant of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he greatly pleased Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by his service. So, being a sincere servant, sir, we're all meant to be servants in the spiritual platform. We're all servants of Krishna. And we will also learn how to worship Krishna, the proper methods of performing devotional service. We have to be guided, we have to be taught all of these things. No, the body is not eternal. The body of the spiritual master is, is not eternal, but the instructions are eternal. There is the vapu and the vani. So we associate with the spiritual teachers through their vani. Just like Srila Prabhupada's vani, it's very much with us all today and we should all try to take advantage of Srila Prabhupada's instructions. They will guide us. But remember, these instructions are not meant to improve our material condition. They may improve your material condition, they may not. That's not the purpose of the sadhu's instruction. He's not concerned with our material condition. What he's concerned for of material attraction, right? Material attachment and how to advance, how to elevate ourselves in devotional convince more advanced in Krishna consciousness, free from attachment, begins with Sadhu Sangha. Very important. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, just a minute. Um, Lalita Mataji and a few others, you are, you are not there. So, you know, the background noise is serving the class. There's another one more devotee. I, I, I can't um, you know, it's just reflected by, a, you have identified yourself with a number. Can you please mute yourself? Because it's causing a lot of disturbance to the class. I've sent many messages, but... No. And it's just that I can't mute anybody because uh, Zoom doesn't allow me once I give the rights to you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> you didn't need to give the rights to me. I could have just spoke. You could have kept the rights. Anyway... Uh, are there any questions on that? You know, I've been speaking for a, a long time about the importance of association with devotees. Are there any questions now? Guru Maharaj, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's a very appropriate class for a beginners. I think uh, it looks very uh, basic uh, guidance for a human life. How to start? Many of them are very... Uh, in today's class, it gives us very, very important lesson. It's not very difficult to practice Krishna consciousness. It is a basic fundamental requirement for a human to live and get liberated. It's a very uh, wonderful class for today. In future, we may have this kind of very specific kind of class for the devotees. Thank you for that. Okay. So, thank you for your comment, Dwarkadish Prabhu. Yeah. Guru Maharaj, I have a question here um, from one of the singers. I already answered it towards the end of 
the class, but anyway, I'll just read the, class, the question now. Maharajji, in reality, most of us have only been able to associate with non-sadhus in our lives. Some have positive impacts and some negative impacts in our life. Association with a real sadhu, how do we best deal with the current associations that we are attached to until we find a divine person's association? So this question is from Sudhir Prabhu. We have to be able to recognize who are actually the, the qualified people to give us instruction. Sometimes though, even though they're not proper sadhus, then you, you can learn, if you see the faults, you see the bad qualities in them, so you can understand these kind of things. It can help us to detach ourselves from the material situation, people who are not devotees. So we associate, we associate with them, but we don't associate with them very associate with them. Superficially we associate with them, but we want to save our, to give it to those people who are actually practicing spiritual life. We want to take the full advantage of people who are chanting, who are serving Krishna, who are dedicated to Krishna. You want to associate with these kinds of people. But of course, there's so many other people and we have to mix with them. Yeah, we have to be with them. So we have to be with them, but at the same time, not overly attached to them, not overly identifying with them. At the same time, you, 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 want, you don't want to compromise on some principles. For example, food. You want to be very careful about what kind of food you eat. And so what the level of eating and drinking, all kinds of disgusting things, we want to be very controlled style, and we don't want to compromise on that. You don't want to sacrifice your integrity just for the sake of uh, having some connection with some materialistic person. So keep your principles. Just like Prabhupada told us how he, was, he met one young man who was an old friend of his. And he hadn't seen the man for a very long time either. But Srila Prabhupada told him, he said, oh no, he said, I can't go to cinema. He said, I won't go to cinema with you. Even you pay me lakhs of rupees, I'm not going to go to cinema with you. And so, you know, Prabhupada showed he had his standards. And so in the same way, you know, we have, to we have to meet people, we have to interact with people. And we can go along with them, put on a show and all also like that, you know, be enthusiastic about work and profit and uh, putting a lot of energy into our activities. But at the same time, internally, you have to think of Krishna and you have to remember that we're not the body, we're spirit souls and actually we're all servants of Krishna. So like that, you have to, we have to tolerate. Prabhupada gave the example, he said, you're going fishing, of course we don't fish, but it's an example Prabhupada gave. You want to catch the fish, you don't want to get wet. So the same way, you have to live in the material world, we have to work in the material world, we have to get something from it because we have to live, but you don't want to get caught up in the material world. Another example, the lotus sits on the water, not in the water. The lotus is never covered by the water. It sits on the water. In the same way, the devotee should be like that lotus flower. We should not be caught up in the world of material. Try to keep the quality of goodness. So, of course, business life, big city life, prepare yourself by chanting and by reading, hearing scriptures, these things, this will protect us. Just like there's this disease going around now 
Yeah, we have to protect ourselves. We don't want to get infected. Comes by good chanting and by good hearing, worshiping. This to interact in material life and not to be affected by the materialistic environment. So that's my response to that question. Is there? Hare Krishna Gurudev. Krishna, Gurudev. Please accept our humble obeisances to you, all brothers Srila Prabhupada. Jai, uh, the Prabhupada. Gurudev, our, our question is, I mean, forgive us for inadequacies in, 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 in our knowledge and understanding. Um, Sankhya philosophy talks about the inferior energy and <laughs> superior energy. Example, how the king is, um, you know, detached from the prison, although he maintains the prison with all the rules, um, for the prisoners to, or uh, well, we are in the, as prisoners to actually come out from or rehabilitate ourselves, and it also has these three modes of nature in it, and 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 within us that guidance of trying to move go, move towards mode of goodness. So, is mode of goodness is part of the inferior energy? Is part of the superior energy? Is the first question. Just from all this material, all the inferior energies, right? Uh, we are still kind of part of it. It's quite difficult because of the social. We get, we can call it maybe in terms of inferior energy, and of course over time it does say that we should completely detach, do not have association of such uh, non-devotees of Krishna. And how is the best way to slowly go towards on that path? Because I can't tell for sure for myself that I'm not in the mode of goodness 100 percent. I'm definitely trying to get myself there. That's a you know big every year I put myself a. Uh, you know, a yardstick that to move my, myself towards there, but how can you uh, how, you know, guide us, you know? Well, the, the mo we have to understand the mode, the mode of goodness can be mixed with passion and ignorance, uh, but there is also something called Shuddha Sattva or pure goodness which is transcendental, which is above the mode of goodness. If it's simply the mode of goodness, then the mode of goodness will be mixed with sometimes passion and sometimes ignorance. But if one is somehow able to come to the level of uh, Shuddha Sattva, pure goodness, then there's no more influence of passion or ignorance. And so that level of pure goodness that is achieved simply by fully engaging in devotional service in Krishna consciousness, cent percent, a hundred percent, you know, everything. But you, you have to work in the world, you have to... But as much as possible, we want to take advantage of devotional service. If you do a good sadhana, some practice of uh, hearing and chanting on a regular basis, then that can give us the strength to overcome the influence of the lower modes. The pas passion and ignorance can be minimized by associating with the holy name and the scriptures, hearing from devotees, away from the mode of passion. So it's a gradual process. Uh, these, you know, we're much more absorbed in passion and ignorance and hardly any goodness. But somehow we come to Krishna consciousness, and so we gradually start to minimize and put away or give up even the association with the, the mode of ignorance and we come to the mode of goodness. Now, from the mode of goodness, it's much easier to transcend because it's not so far from there in the mode of ignorance and then to come all the way up to the mode. You can do it, but it's a big jump up. You know, somebody's a drunkard and a womanizer and a gambler. It's really in the mode of ignorance and Krishna. You know, it's a big jump up. It's a big change. So it's often, sometimes people get come up to the mode of goodness and become more sit more or life becomes more 
centered around the mode of goodness and less passion and ignorance. And then from the mode of goodness then it's much easier to transcend, to come to the transcendental platform. It's not so far to go. It's not such a big jump. But we have to try to get rid of the, the lust and the greed, which are symptoms of the mode of passion and ignorance, right? Lust, anger and greed, the, the doorway into hell, Prabhupada describes. So we certainly want to try to avoid these things. So the, when we minimize the lust and the greed and the anger, and then we can come more up to the mode of goodness, be more situated in the mode of goodness, mind peaceful, happy, like that, sense controlled. Mm. And then this way we can come to the tran transcendental platform, coming up to the, the pure goodness, the level of pure goodness where one is fully Krishna conscious, fully fixed in Krishna consciousness. Everything is just devotional service, every activity. So that's pure goodness. So yes, it, it takes time. We have to come up to the first, uh, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the first canto, second chapter, Lord Krishna describes, how we should become first situated in the mode of goodness and then the modes of passion and ignorance are removed, minimized and removed. They're situated in goodness and then in the mode of goodness then we transcend. Divine divinity. Yeah. And so, you know, it takes no service, it takes practice follow the rules and regulations, do the chanting, and gradually start to change. Just take some practice. Everything takes practice, but if we continue to practice hearing and chanting, then the heart starts to change. The thinking, the mood changes, there's less passion, less, there should be no ignorance, less passion, and we, we become more equipoised, we're stable, we're not thrown off when things go wrong, oh, you, you get a flat tire, you don't curse and swear and throw things around in anger and rage, you know. Okay, <laughs> you know. Krishna's given. It seems like you're red on my. Krishna's testing. <laughs> we think Krishna's testing me, you know. Krishna's just giving me a test. Yes. So we become more tolerant and we learn to adjust to every situation, the difficulties, the problems, and at the same time the happiness as well. We see it all as the arrangement of Krishna. It's, uh, one from three questions, one from Ramananda Raya Prabhuji and one from Yogita Mataji. So can I request Sri Devi Gorangi Mataji to uh, post her question first? Mataji, would you like to unmute yourself? Sri Devi Mataji? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Sri Devi. Hare Krishna, Srila Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. Very grateful for a very wonderful, beautiful class. Uh, Srila Guru Maharaj, my question is, should we still endeavor to, uh, to preach to someone who is inimical to our Krishna consciousness uh, practices, saying that they don't mind uh, God's punishment and it doesn't apply to them because they are not Krishna conscious anyway, so uh, they will not be able to follow anything. Uh, so, uh, uh, how do we handle uh, such a person, if the person is very, actually very elderly actually, how do we handle the situation? 
well, if they're not if they're not favorable to Krishna consciousness, they don't like to hear, then it, it's better sometimes just to neglect them, and not to try to convince them about Krishna consciousness. But okay. just just leave them. Yeah, we have to know who to preach to. You know, generally, the the Madhyama devotee, the intermediate devotee must make distinctions. You have to see who is actually worthy, who is really interested by chanting the holy name, let them hear the holy name. Yes. Thank you very much to Padmalochana Prabhu for giving me this opportunity to ask the question. Thank you Thank very you. much, Madhaji. Thank you very much. Uh, next question from uh, Ramana Raya uh, Prabhuji and uh, Shushmita Madhaji. Maharaj. I want to oh. unmute yourself. Okay. You know, last week when, it, when we gave class, the power went on. In about 10 minutes, so should I just type my question and leave it, or is related no. to the first question that uh, Prabhu had asked? Okay, so Gurudev, uh, uh, we can hear you now. Uh, I mean, you're muted, but okay, I'm back on. You can hear me, okay? Okay, yes, yes. So, one moment's association that moment of the association is when that instruction deeply goes into your heart and you never forget it, that you take that, that, that advice, that word, these words which the sadhu has said to you, that you take it very seriously and it goes into your heart and you, you never forget this instruction. Just like Srila Prabhupada met his Guru Maharaj and his spiritual master immediately said to him, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And so, from the very first meeting, that instruction that entered his heart, and he never forgot that, that kind of deep impression, lasting impression, that is the one moment's association. Another time, uh, there was one... Oh, can you hear me? Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes good. Another time... Uh, one man came to Prabhupada, he asked Prabhupada to come to his home. And so Prabhupada asked him, do you eat meat? The man said, well, yes, sometimes we do eat meat. So then Prabhupada said, then I, then I will not come. And so when Prabhupada said that, then the man immediately, he was so affected, he made his home completely vegetarian. So that instruction, very heavy, very profound instruction, entered the heart, changed. That is the one moment's association, like that. When it, it doesn't just go in one ear and out the other, but it really goes to the heart. The person really changes. Okay, Yogira, you want to ask your question before you go to work? Yes, go ahead, thank you. Gurudev, you, were, uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, a Shuddha Sattva, uh, that one needs to be at that level to be in the pure mode of goodness. But Gurudev, you know, in this material world, with working all the time, office and so many other things to deal with, but can we even touch that mood when we, for example, when I go into office, pray to the Lord, thank the Lord, and then uh, there are times like lunchtime or any other time, spend time in chanting, just somehow even relate the work to the mercy of the Lord. Treat the work as the mercy of the Lord, those moments, because quite a lot of hours are spent there, but then even sometimes remembering, and I'm like, no, it's all thanks to your mercy that I'm here. Thank you, my Lord. I mean, can I just relate the time that I spend even over there, out of mode of ignorance at least? Yes, definitely you should. You should have like that. You should think that your work is also service to Krishna. Don't see anything separate from Krishna consciousness. So you have a job, you're working some place, and, 
and you're doing some ordinary service and it may appear to be mundane, a business, some business activity, but you're doing it for Krishna. Just see that Krishna somehow has put you into this situation and this is your service for Krishna. Okay? And the fruit of your work also you use for the service of Krishna. With your labor you're able to purchase flowers and you can cook food and you can make dresses and jewelry can be offered for the deity. In this way you utilize the fruit of your labor for the pleasure of Krishna. So yeah, you should think everything in relation to Krishna. And so your office work is also, but you can think of it as service to Krishna. That, that should be there. So if you can chant, if you do get a chance to chant, very nice. But Oh yes, good. Okay. So how about That's the beauty of this job. Get time and then those moments I use to at least chant the rounds in the middle of the days, whenever I get the time. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you so very much, Gurudev. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Padmalochan Prabhu, do we have another question? Was there? Uh, I do not see anyone else no. chatting in. Anyone okay. else will have any questions? You may, you know, mute, uh, unmute yourself and post the question to Guru Maharaj. No. Okay. Anyway. We have Srinivas Govinda Prabhu um, also on this Zoom call. We have Shushmita Mataji, Goranga Ma Gorangi Mataji. Um, who else is here? We have Sudarshan Prabhu, Dwarkadesh Prabhu. Um, we have uh, Tamil Rasan Prabhu. We have uh, Kasturi Bai Mataji. So these are all the names they have mentioned on the um, on the Zoom account when they were logging in. So they may have, you know, the initiated names, etc. No, I know, I know the names. Yeah, okay. many. And then we have from, uh, from Malaysia our, um, participants from the Shmeran Temple also. Satya Mataji, Gopi Prabhu, um, mm. Deepa Mataji, uh, and we also have Vaishnava Kripa Prabhu. We have Rajahari Prabhu. Okay. Uh, Cindy, Cindy Mataji, Cindy Ong Mataji, yeah. huh? Prachi, Pitra Mataji, Siva Prabhu, Raj Prabhu. Wow, big, big crowd. Okay. So, so dear Prabhu, Rajalila Mataji. Oh, Rajalila and... Yes, yes uh, she's here. Karana Mataji. Karana Mataji is in a clinic. Yeah. In the hospital, but she's still on the call. Huh? Karana Mataji. Yeah, she's a nurse, so she works in the hospital. Oh. Remember Guru Maharaj, about one year ago, we went to the KK hospital to see a small little baby who was going to go for an operation. Yes. Yeah, so uh, the, the son is uh, Sharda Mataji's son. How is the baby? Very nice. Yeah, he just celebrated his first birthday. We thought that baby was going to leave the body, right? We were, we were offering prayers. Yeah, Mercy, everything went really well. Yeah, oh. yeah. So she's on the call. She, uh, Tiana, Ma, Tiana is here. Linda is here. Linda is also a Mataji uh, nurse. So she's, uh, uh, yeah, she's she's nurse. Uh, she she's Alex is also here. Alex G. Sonia Misser, Story by Shruti Mataji, Mauli. Uh, yeah. So these are all those who are present. Okay, so the lockdown is finishing this weekend there, Singapore? Yeah? Does that mean the border is opening? No, 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 not, not so soon, not so soon. No. Even Guru Maharaj, our lockdown in Malaysia is up to September, up to June 9. And it's going to be further control. They don't let any foreigners to come in. There are two ways of controlling. Once they come in into Malaysia, 14 days, the central lockdown. Another 14 days, the house lockdown. Mm -hmm. So it's really a problem. The first 14 days, the government put in the central lockdown. They go to pay for all the expenses. So, and then they are encouraging the people not to travel overseas for the next two years. 
And today, uh, the interstate from Penang to KL, we cannot travel until June 9. So we are all isolated, you know, remaining in Penang for the past two months. <laughs> <laughs> so Tista soon is in KL for another two months. We are, we are preparing for one Krishna or Sanyas Raghuji. <laughs> 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 only thing taking care of my family because they are all in Krishna consciousness. I told to Guru Maharaj, even my grandchildren are more influenced and more well versed in the slokas than me. <laughs> Very nice. You're very lucky. Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, I have a fun question. Yeah. Uh, when we are associating with devotees, it also is one of the reasons why we sometimes don't advance because we do a lot of aparat and all these things. So, in I like to ask, when we are associating with devotees, whether it is no senior devotee or, or or not so senior devotees, what is the main thing you should keep in mind at all times? This is just to help me uh, get maximum association benefits from them. Well, when we associate with devotees, we should think that this is a nice opportunity to discuss Krishna consciousness and the association should be with topics of Krishna. We meet with the devotees, we want to discuss, we want to enlighten one another and converse. We want to chant the holy name, you know, Lord Chaitanya would be reciting different slokas. When he went to Govardhan, he'd recite that verse about Govardhan Hill, how the gopis praise Govardhan Hill. And when he's in the, in the forest of Jarakanda, he's thinking this is Vrindavan. And he recites some other sloka from Srimad Bhagavatam describing all the different deer, how they are so fortunate to see the son of Nanda Maharaj in the forest of Vrindavan. So we want to try to keep our Krishna conscious, uh, being in the association of devotees is an opportunity for us to, to, to remember Krishna and to associate with Krishna in the association of devotees. The topics of Lord Krishna are very pleasing to the ear and the heart, right? So it becomes especially true when we're with devotees, because it's devotees who take pleasure in hearing about Krishna. And so being in the association of devotees, we want to Try to remember like that. Give some nectar about Krishna. Right? Devotees are nectar. We like the nectar. Where's the nectar? So there's a lot of nectar in our scriptures and we like to be able to tell others about the nectar that which we came across, what we've been reading, been hearing. So this is how to associate, this is the real meaning of association, we come together, discussing Krishna Consciousness. Thank you Guru Maharaj. Uh, I just want to check again, uh, in the Nectar of Instruction it says Guya Makyati Prachati. So that, does that also mean in relation only with Krishna? Yeah, and everything, everything in relation to Krishna. Krishna means Krishna, Krishna's energies, Krishna's paraphernalia, everything in connection with Krishna's service. It's all Krishna, right? Service to Krishna. Krishna can, can be Krishna's expansions, Krishna's incarnations. We can be talking about Krishna's devotees also. They're all representatives of Krishna. So one indifferent from Krishna. So not just only Krishna person, then the original 
person, but everything in relation to Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, um, Mary Lee Matuti had also joined. She was there since the beginning and then she just logged out. So just to keep you informed, Mary Lee Matuti. I think she's probably from Hong Kong or Malaysia. No, she's from Penang. Yeah, Penang. Yeah, Mary. Uh, up from uh, Todu, actually. From Todu, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, anyone else would like to uh, unmute your, uh, yourself? Rajahari Prabhu, Srinivas Govinda Prabhuji, Rupa Raghunath. We also have Shamugam Prabhu, Shamuganathan Prabhu on the call. Yeah, uh -huh. He has been coming every day since the last 39 days for the morning classes. Really? Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, he and his wife Chitra Mataji. Yesterday she learned the background the background of her name, Chitra being one of the important principal sakis. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thank you very much, Guru okay. Maharaj. Looks okay. like none of the other Guru Maharaj? Yes. Tamar Rasan, Prabhuji, please proceed. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, how to contact you personally? How to contact me personally? Well, nice, well, I have a, we have an internet connection, we have WhatsApp and like... Uh, so, I have emailed you, Guru Maharaj, first two, two days before. You emailed me two days before? Uh, I don't remember seeing it. I check my mail every day. You, you sent it to my Hotmail account? No, uh, I'm not sure, Guru Maharaj. I have a new email, Guru Maharaj. Oh. Where did you send it? What, what e email address do you have? Uh, Tamirasan. You are, Guru Maharaj. Huh? You are, sir. Yeah, US mine. Email address. Yeah, mine. Yeah, what's mine? Hotmail. Uh, wait, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I have a Hotmail account. Anyway, you can get my WhatsApp number from... Do you use WhatsApp? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. And so you can get my WhatsApp number from Padmalochan Prabhu. He can give you my WhatsApp number or Ramananda Rai. And you can... Uh, I have sent, sent your Hotmail account, Guru Maharaj. Oh, you sent a Hotmail? Okay. Then I'll find, if you send, but I, I didn't see it. When did you send? Two days ago? Ah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Regarding to my marriage proposal. I didn't see any message there. Did you send the message again? Send it again. Uh, okay, Guru Maharaj. I, then I try to get your WhatsApp number from Prabhus. Okay, then you can do that. But Hotmail should have come. If it was in Hotmail, it should be. I never saw it though. What, you've got an invite? You've got a marriage proposal? Oh, yes, Guru Maharaj. I was sending you, then I have a writing, everything in uh, email, Guru Maharaj. Okay. So I'll look to see the mail. I'll reply when I get the mail. So, Guru Maharaj, we have uh, Krishna and uh, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Krishna. On the call, also Brajahari San Krishna and oh. Krishna. Oh, uh, ah. uh, uh, Prabhu's daughter. Both of them are on the call too. <laughs> very nice. I'm sure they're very good devotees. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj, so thank you very much. Okay. Uh, like, no other questions. Thank you very much for a wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for uh, the association. Some of the devotees are, you know, um, nudging me to see if we can organize another one next Thursday. Um, how's your schedule like, Guru Maharaj? I know it's very early in the morning, but... Uh, yeah, if they want, if they have time. But you're all working, you don't have much time. No, I'm still... Uh, you know, I have a flexibility of working from home or going back to the office. So I'll, I'll just do a, a, a short um, 
those of you who are around, uh, can you just type in yes if you can make it for next Thursday? I think we should continue every Thursday, Prabhu, uh, until the lockdown is over. <laughs> the lockdown. So those who can able to join in, then we can work it out. You know? Okay. At least we can see Guru Maharaj. I mean, I mean, very inspired by today's class for the basic of uh, preaching to the uh, non-devotees. It will really convince them as to what I can see. I also send a text to WhatsApp to all of you, see that how it works. We are not actually, when preaching is, when the class is giving, we are not giving this kind of context of consciousness. Today's class, what Guru Maharaj gave in the presentation as well as explanation by Kapil Dev uh, to Devuti Mataji, I think, is very, very inspiring. So basically, people can able to absorb it. I can see that way. Okay. Cindy Mataji, you have anything to say? Cindy Mataji, any questions? No? Okay. It has been like, what, two months since you came back from Mayapur? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.